a hundred years. <laughs> yeah, we'll get there. Hallelujah. I want each and every one in the congregation and each and every one joining by television to ask yourself that question. Where will you be a hundred years from now? You're going to live somewhere forever. A lot of people think when I die, I'm going to the ground. That's it. It's all over. That's what a lot of preachers preach. They preach soul sleep. When you go to the grave, that's it. You lay in the grave till Jesus comes. That's not what the word of God says. Your soul is going to live forever. Whether you're wicked, good, bad, or ugly, you're going to live somewhere forever. You're either going to live in heaven or you're going to be with Satan in hell, one of the two, until Jesus comes back to this earth. And the Bible says wherever he is, we shall be with him. So if he's in heaven, we're going to be in heaven with him. If he's on earth, we'll be here on earth. And, uh, but I ask yourself that question, where am I going to be 100 years from now? Am I going to be burning in hell or am I going to be with Christ? And uh, I hope that the answer is Christ, but you are going to be somewhere. And uh, Brother Cecil uh, I appreciate him. I appreciate what he stands for. And I want to lift up Sherry Keith also because she's the one that got us started going up there. Sister Sherry got us going up to War West Virginia and didn't even know where the place was. And I followed her up there one day. We carried a trailer load and two or three truck loads of stuff. And she introduced me to, to Brother Cecil and been up there several times. And But I want to thank God for Sister Sherry because she's continually taking load after load. Even when we're not going, she's still going. Get, gather up what she can and taking up there to help them. And, and like Brother Cecil said, you don't know what poor is until you go there. You don't know what poor is. I mean, we, the, our poorest people here in Moore County, 
uh, don't we, you don't, the, the, you can't even imagine. They're they're millionaires compared to what they are in war, and so we want all to give that can. Uh, anyway, I want you, if you will, to go with me uh, over in your Bible. If you have your Bible, turn with me. Second Thessalonians chapter two, and you know, church, the Word of God is the Word of God. Doesn't matter whether it's read here under the anointing or read in the First Baptist Church under the anointing or read in War West Virginia under the anointing. It's the same word. And you can't get around the word of God. You can't just you can't just take it out and, out of context and say, well, I'm going to change this today. But Second Thessalonians chapter two. Now, we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto you. Paul is writing to Thessalonica, the church in Thessalonia, Thessalonica. And he says that you be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by the spirit nor by word, nor by letters as from us, as that day of Christ is at hand. And the Christians are not going to be shaken when the day of the Lord shall appear. Christians are not going to be shaken or troubled when they see Christ coming in the clouds, when they hear the trumpet. Christians, the born-again children of God, have nothing to fear. Why? Because death has no hold on a child of God. We're going to be rejoicing, and it says, Be not troubled, be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letters, as from us, as that day of Christ is at hand. It's at, Paul was writing back then it was at hand. But you see, Paul, at that time, couldn't see what's happening today. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. A great falling away first is what I want to talk about for the next few minutes. The true churches that are standing on the rock of Jesus Christ, preaching the blood of Jesus, preaching repentance, preaching the true word, are seeing a great falling away. Now those that are giving prosperity messages and uh, motivational speeches and stuff, they're seeing their congregations grow. I shouldn't have said churches. Those buildings where the people are gathering together. We, they're not even, you know, we shouldn't even call them churches. The buildings where people are giving motivational speeches and the buildings where people are talking about prosperity, they're growing. Why? Because of Timothy. Paul wrote Timothy a letter in Second Timothy, and I know that I preach on this a lot and I harp on it a lot, but church, this is the message of today. When else, what other time in your lifespan have you seen people arrested for being Christians? When have you seen people arrested for putting the Ten Commandments up? When have you seen people arrested for putting out nativity scenes and, and lifting up the name of Jesus? When have you seen people arrested for saying Jesus or praising the Lord? When have you heard people say, we're going to take God off of our money? We're going to take God out of the, Congre the, the Constitution. We're going to take God out of everything. When have you ever seen that in your lifetime? It's happening now. It's happening right now. And that this great falling away is man has turned their back on God. Man has turned their back on God. And the so-called Christians, that they, they claim to be Christians, but if you're a true born-again, blood-bought child of God, it doesn't matter what the government says. It doesn't matter what the laws are. You're going to put your feet on that solid rock, and you're going to stand for what the Word of God says. You're not going to worry about what people think about you. You're not going to be concerned about how many friends you've got because you see when you're standing before God at judgment day, it's going to be you and God. It's going to be you and the Holy Bible. He's not going to judge you by what I say. He's not going to judge you by what the government says. He's going to judge you by what he wrote in the Bible. And you can sit there and say all day long, well, I didn't know, I didn't know. Well, that's your fault because he told you to study it. He told you to study the Word of God. He told you. He said, faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. You need to be sitting under someone that is reading the Word of God. You need to have your Bibles open along with that person and making sure that what they're reading and what they're saying is coming out of the Word of God. 
because it's the Word of God that's going to judge us. Over in Second Timothy, Second Timothy chapter 4, verse 2, preach the Word. Be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Now, why would Paul write to Timothy, an evangelist, and tell him to do these type things? Why would God anoint Paul to write over two-thirds of the New Testament? Why would God, the Holy Spirit, direct Paul to put these words in a letter to Timothy? Would it, could it possibly be because that's what he wants him to do? Could it possibly be because this is God's desire? He said, preach the word, be instant in season and out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. All long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come, for the time will come. Now, Paul is writing this letter to Timothy, so at that particular time, it hasn't come yet. But he's writing a letter to Timothy and saying, there's going to come a time. The time will come. And he said, I'm writing this so that David Bybee can read it. And, you know, it'll teach him that that time is going to come. That other Christians can read it. Other pastors can read it. Other preachers can read it. And it'll, it'll let them know that this is my desire to preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Because the time will come. He said, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. People today don't want to hear that they have to come out of sin. People today don't want to hear that.